The first level of risk I want to touch on is strategic risk. This is sort of obvious. Very often, when you get hold of a hammer, everything around you looks like a nail. And you'll belt the living Harry out of it because that's what you've got. That very often, major acquisitions of this kind force you into a field of decision making which precipitates exactly the conditions which you think the acquisition are going to prevent from happening. And for those of you who follow the deterrence argument, you must know that deterrence is actually nonsense also. It's a gambler's risk. That's all deterrence is. And if you want to read some stuff about that, get onto our website. I've written a lot about it. I want to talk also about sovereignty risk. The government has said that Australia will retain sovereign authority over these submarines. It can't. It just can't. Uh, we don't have the trained naval personnel now or into the future who can actually operate these things. The Chief of the Navy two weeks ago went off to the United States to welcome into the Navy three naval officers who've now been trained, short course training, to operate these things. We'll get them in 10, 15 years time, but we need over 100 of these people and you don't acquire them that quickly. So we won't be able to operate these as a sovereign entity. They will always be under the sovereign control of whoever is the original owner, probably the United States in this case, perhaps Britain if we ever do something in parallel with the Brits. I might say the British submarine that they're building now was laid down at roughly the same time as Collins was laid down. Collins finished in 2003. The Brits are still going with theirs. Um, th that is the case. Astute was down at about the same time as Collins. So if we get in bed with the British, well, all of us will be celestial harpists by the time any of that comes to fruition. But don't take any courage from that. Uh, it'll fall over anyway. I want to talk briefly about industrial risk. We have quite strong industry in Australia, but we don't have nuclear industry. For a long time, we've taken very clear decisions in Australia, right across the political spectrum, not to have a nuclear industry here. How on earth is, an, is a country like Australia able to operate the propulsion systems of all of these submarines when we don't own any nuclear power production that is anything like these things. They run on highly enriched uranium, by the way. We don't have any here, we don't produce it. And as I'll come on to, there's a lot of risk in dealing with it when you're finished with it. I want to touch on operational risk. The Collins class submarine comes in just around 4,000 tonnes. These things come in around 10,000 tonnes. Now that's a displaced weight. They're not twice as big. They just displace two and a half times the amount of water, but they are much bigger. They're optimised for operating in deep water because their principal role in the US and British navies is to chase after the nuclear deterrent submarines of the, their opponents. So those ones operate in deep water. These ones are intended to operate in deep water. Where are we going to operate them? Well, we think we're going to operate them in the shallow waters to pin the Chinese Navy into its ports in China. Well, if you believe in that, ladies and gentlemen, buy your Melbourne Cup ticket right now. Back the, the Tooth Fairy and back the Easter Bunny. They're more likely to give you a return than anybody coming back on one of those submarines from operations of that kind. I now want to touch on nuclear materials risk, and this is particularly an issue around waste. Some of you might know that um, just, I think about three weeks ago, there was an important judgment in the Federal Court of Australia where the Bangala people of the Eyre Peninsula won their case in the Federal Court where the judge said the South Australian government may not store waste there. Pastor Ray has told you about the waste that is already stored at Maralinga. And of course, it would be possible for an Australian government in the future to decide that it's going to store waste on defence land, if that's what you would like to call it, which is out past Woomera. There may not be native title on that. We don't know at this point. But I would make the point 
that we have no capacity at the moment to store high-grade uranium waste in Australia, nor does America. They keep them in barrels above the surface of the land and they have since Trinity. And as Pastor Ray said, if you haven't seen Oppenheimer, go and see it. It'll scare the living hell out of you. Well, it did out of me. I want to touch second lastly on reputational risk. I've spent a lot of my career working with the countries of Southeast Asia. And in Southeast Asia, they're very polite people. They don't say to us, hey, you Australians, you desperately need a deodorant. Least, least of all do they say we stink. But the fact of the matter is our reputation in Southeast Asia is at an all time low because we are taking decisions which are not in tune with any of the things that they think are important for the way in which they want to take their long term security policy. It's not that we're riding roughshod over them, we're simply ignoring them. And the reputational risk from that is really high. You don't do things like that just because you're acting on a whim. You only take reputational risk if it's a necessity. And there's no necessity with these things. And finally, I'm gonna to touch on the financial risk. I can see a few signs here. I'm glad none of you are doing my accounting um, because you have underestimated the cost by a factor of 300%. 368 billion is a sort of starting price. Anyone who's familiar with the acquisition of defence capability will know that when the initial bidding price comes in and it's budgeted, the outturn price is always at least three times as great. And if there's any change out of this program, in this program, from a trillion dollars, I'll eat everybody's hat. Now these seven orders of risk intersect to determine this to be critically bad policy. So what you all need to do is get up on your feet and sing out in your loudest voice, this is mad. And there are many other things that we are capable of spending our money on. Whether it's early child care, whether it is education, whether it is aged care, whether it is national infrastructure, whether it is public transport systems in all of our city, whether it's improving the sewage systems of our expanding cities. Any number of trillions of dollars can be spent on all of you rather than spending it on the submarine construction yards of the United States and Britain. So I would conclude by saying as a decision, AUKUS is antithetical to our strategic interests, it's antithetical to all of us, and it's antithetical to the human race. And if there are any pro arguments for AUKUS, I now would love to hear them. Thank you all very much.